Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Monty Python. Hello and welcome back. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his sneaky squire. In the end, Don Quixote convinces Sancho to suffer his mistreatment, marveling at the power his squire now has. Have patience, my son, and give to these gentlemen what they wish, and to the heavens many thanks for having granted this virtue to your person, such that by its martyrdom you can disenchant the enchanted and resuscitate the dead. So Sancho offers his face and beard to the women and accepts their pinches as well as those of many others present. But the ceremony goes horribly wrong when Sancho takes action to avoid the pinpricks. He stood up from his chair, apparently irked, and grabbing a burning torch that was near him, he went after the duenas and after all the other torturers, saying, Be gone, infernal ministers. Notice how this last metaphor turns the ministers of the Inquisition into hell's minions. Did you know? The victims of the Inquisition wore special caps and capes, often related to the nature of their sins. It is significant that at this precise moment, Altisidora comes back to life. Alive is Altisidora, Altisidora lives. Notice the chiasmus, similar to that of the novel of the Curious Impertinent, where Camila surrendered, surrender did Camila. Note also that Don Quixote immediately recognizes that Altisidora's return to life via Sancho's martyrdom means that his squire can also save Dulcinea. As soon as Don Quixote saw Altisidora stir, he threw himself to his knees before Sancho, saying to him, now is the time, son of my soul, rather than my squire, to give yourself some of the lashes that you are obliged to give for the disenchantment of Dulcinea. Cervantes pushes the feudal relationship to its breaking point. Sancho is no longer just Don Quixote's squire, but rather his own son. Quixotic Mission What is Don Quixote's monomania throughout the second part of the novel? A. To disenchant Dulcinea B. To return to Toledo C. To become a shepherd Correct answer A. To disenchant Dulcinea the chapter's denouement does three things. First, it highlights the primitive sacrificial nature of the ceremony. Lamenting the fact that he is always a scapegoat, it's that in order to cure other people's ills, I have to be the sacrificial cow. Sancho asks to be thrown into a well. Simply take a giant rock and tie it to my neck and throw me into a well. Recall what Thoraida says her father will do to her when he discovers her intention to go to Spain. Second, it begs the question of whether or not Sancho is totally innocent. The exiled Morisco Ricote or the shoeless citizens of Micomicon, for example, might find him guilty. Third, the chapter's denouement highlights the textile theme again. Altisidora promises to give Sancho more of her clothes. Keep at your disposal, Sancho, my friend, from today forward, six shirts that I am sending you so that you can make six more for yourself, which, if not entirely seemly, are at least clean. Also, Sancho requests that the Duke and Duchess give him the tunic with flames and the hat with devils, for he wished to take them home with him as a memento and proof of that never-before-seen adventure. What do textiles have to do with a parody of the Inquisition? Recall that the expulsion of the Moriscos decimated the silk industry in southern Spain. That's all for now. Join me next time as we continue interpreting the most important literary masterpiece in the Spanish language. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.